In Chicago, there were no signs that said color folks on one side, white folks on the other. When we got off the train, everybody went through the same door, to the same waiting room. There was no sneaking in the back way to Chicago. Why does the Negro leave the South? <laughs> Indeed, you would feel a large part of the answer if you could be on this train, in this Jim Crow car, and share for one night the longing of these people to reach the line that divides Dixie from the rest of creation. As soon as I got on that train, I felt free. Sure, I was sitting in the Jim Crow section up front where all the coal and dust rose up, got in the windows and ruined my clothes. But the chugging of the train couldn't hardly keep up with the beating of my heart. Just behind us is a car for white people, where they can stretch out and rest their heads. They have paid exactly the same fares as we have. Some of these colored men are in the service of the United States, summoned from the far corners of Texas to fight for democracy in Europe. This is certainly a good preparation for trench warfare. We were hoping we'd see the Mason-Dixon line. I thought it would look like a line of trees with some kind of white mark in the middle. Then someone said, the bridge ahead was it. We were north now. Mm-hmm. 
or moss. He come to the field with a man called the speculator. They walk around just looking, just looking. All the darkies know what this means. They didn't dare look up, just walk right on. Then the speculator, he see who he want. He talked on moss. Then he slaps the handcuffs on them, tack them away to the cotton country. Oh, them was awful times. When the speculator was ready to go with the slaves, if and there was any who didn't want to go, he'd thrash them, then tie them behind the wagon and make them run till they fall on the ground. Then he'd thrash them till they say they go without no trouble. Sometimes some of them run away and come back to the plantation. Then it was harder on them than before. When the darkies went to dinner, the old mama, she say, well, I'm such and such. None of the others want to tell her. But when she see them look down to the ground, she just say, the specker. I remember the time when my mama was alive. I was a small child before they took the Rims Creek. All us children was playing in the yard one night, just running and playing like children will. All of a sudden, mama come to the door all excited. Come in here this minute, she said. Just look up at what's happening. And bless your life, honey, the stars was falling just like rain. Mammy was terrible scared. But we children wasn't afeard, no, we wasn't afeard. But Mammy, she say, every time a star falls, somebody gonna die. Look like a lot of folks gonna die from the looks of them stars. Mm-hmm. 